Welcome to the A to G podcast. I'm Jacob. And I'm Darren. And we welcome you to the episode 10 monumentous episode last week. We're trying to follow up on here. If you guys didn't check it out yet, uh, episode 9 last week. Amazing. It was like the ADG podcast WrestleMania. That's what I call it. <laughs> but not as long. But not as long. Oh, actually, you know not, what? It was close. It was close, but but it was more, at, I think it was, uh, there weren't any lull periods. You know, we had Chris Van Bleet on uh, talking about his WrestleMania experience. Great interview. Definitely go worth a listen. Check him out. It, it was obviously one of the best interviews that we've done on the ADG podcast so far. Yeah, it was great. We had a voice memos interview at the same time. It was an yeah. hour and 36 minute episode. <laughs> it was insanity. You guys exactly. can go check that out, share it. You know, just uh, we had good feedback about it, actually. Yeah, um, really yeah, good. good. Mm-hmm. I liked it. Everybody's exactly. listening, watching. I know everybody's hitting it up on iTunes mm-hmm. for sure. But don't forget, it's it's on YouTube and all that other cool stuff. So yep. still, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Because um, it was probably the best episode we've done so far, but definitely the biggest. Oh, for sure. It, it, it just sets the bar high. Now we have to surpass it. We have to exactly. do our best to, to, to bring our listeners even more outstanding content. Exactly. And if you guys want us to interview anybody that you like or want to hear from, throw us an uh, email, adgpodcast.gmail.com, or message us on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook group. Everything it's at AG Podcast, and uh, we'll we'll try to we'll try to work something out. We're so, talking to a lot of different people, and if you have somebody you like, let us know. That's it. So, Jake, uh, you mentioned a little bit on the last week's episode that you went to Cincinnati for a soccer tournament. I did. Your kids were playing in a soccer tournament, and yep. you and you had one of your uh, famous Jacob rants about crazy overbearing parents screaming from the sideline. That's right. Now I gotta ask because mm-hmm. I know everyone who's listening wants to know: Were you one of those parents screaming from the sidelines this past I, week? I was. I was screaming from the <laughs> sidelines. And if you, anybody who was li- <laughs> online on uh, Saturday <clears throat> around, I don't know, I think it was around noonish sometime or whatever, I we I broadcasted live on our Instagram page, yes. kind of uh, where I was, got give you a little view of the fields and all the parents and. You know, just a little quick, a little broadcast, a few minutes. Yeah, no, it was it was interesting because everything we talked about last week's show and uh, with the parents yelling and all that stuff. Oh my god, it was just like a foreshadowing of that weekend. By the time I I got there, set up, you know, playing teams you I've, we've never seen before, and I'm like, oh, this will be interesting. This will be more and more stuff for the show because we talked about parents yelling. Oh yeah, those parents yelling at referees. There was parents yelling at kids. You know, I was yelling at, uh, at my kid as, as usual, actually. Mm-hmm. But And then uh, that was just during the one of our games. And then I got there early and watched a couple other games while waiting for our second game to start. And holy shit. <laughs> it was like word for word, everything I described not to do was being right. done. Right. There was I, I was standing behind two rows of parents from two different teams watching um, a game. Referee was in the middle doing his thing, refereeing. He had two linemen and all that other cool stuff. And there's every call, there was parents from one team just giving shit to the referee. Like, what the hell was that? What kind of call was that? You're calling everything one way. The referee, holy shit, patience, actually had to explain the rules to these people. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, like I called this because of that because they had no idea what he was what what was going on <laughs> on the field, and you know these are parents that their kids are playing soccer for fun even though it's right. like a super super competitive level. Sure, but you you can't question things if you don't know the rules. It, exactly. If 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 they think like oh, that that kid's doing something that's got to be illegal, you know they mm-hmm. start complaining like that's it's like no that's the rule. Right. They, they're they're allowed referee, to do that. Exactly, and the referee's calling something, and you don't know what what it is on how. Don't yell. Don't assume it's negative just because it's against your kid. It might be something that has to do with the actual game. Like I'm on my, during our first game, it was like eight forty five in the damn morning on a Saturday. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, the, there was parents on the other team that 
I kind of had to yell and explain what the hell an offside is and <laughs> how it works at that age group. Because they're, they're, they're yelling offside when clearly my, you know, our kids weren't. <laughs> you know, just rules you should know before you go out to the game, before you make a fool out of yourself in front of people. All right. Um, it is, yeah, it was interesting because everything we talked about, holy shit, it just appeared right in front of me and a bunch of groups <laughs> of parents. I'm like, oh, my God. And I didn't bring my camera with me uh, uh. for some odd reason. I had my phone. It should have just like set up the tripod and be like, here. There you go. The bastion of annoying parents <laughs> from all these different teams. Oh, that's it. There are the, the yeah. sideline, sideline coaches right there. That's right. And if you guys, uh, anybody checked out, there was a few people that checked out the live stream. I know it was early. Mm-hmm. I know it was just out of nowhere. Even though I put up uh, a little notice that I'll be going live. We're definitely going to try uh, doing some of those pop up live uh interviews or you know reactions from on location uh throughout the year as uh we continue with some shows like if we're on location somewhere that we like i was on our trip or if darren's at a show we're definitely gonna try doing that exactly i believe uh not this week but next week i'm gonna be in toronto doing some impact wrestling uh filming so oh, damn. i'll do i'll do my best uh have uh, have a, a live stream just give you guys a behind the scene look at ringside you know, Definitely. the ringside seats <laughs> of uh, of impact wrestling it's 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 one of their pay-per-views so it, that should be exciting yeah that sounds awesome exactly. so since we start off with a little bit of sports let's get into sports yes so jake obviously me being a diehard leafs fan as you remember from last week when I when we were doing an interview with Chris, <laughs> I was trying to fo- trying to do two things at once: watch the Leaf game and do the interview. Obviously, that panned out well. Uh, the Leafs are are tied with with the Boston Bruins in their series, two games each. They go back to Boston and play on Friday, so that will be a, a nerve another nerve wracking game for me. That was a tough game last night. It was a tough game. Uh, n- and another reason why it was a tough game, I don't know if you ever heard of this thing called the Drake Curse. Oh boy. Have you ever heard of this? Yes. Like I've I've heard about it like, you know, an hour or so before the game when they showed him and then social media just blew up. I was like, What is Drake doing there? Shouldn't be there. Did someone get him out, you know? Because he was wearing a Leafs jersey. Oh uh, yeah, you guys aren't. I, yeah, you guys. You, you think now. like, oh, that's no big deal. No, that is a it's very over. big deal yeah. because in sports, you know, superstition. You know, wearing sitting in a certain spot when your team wins, wearing a certain outfit when your team wins, it's that's all right. superstition, right? So, mm-hmm. Jake, uh, Drake fantastic artist i believe we have him on uh the show we use the sound bits when we do the top five that's right great fantastic artist canadian that's great all that but he's got to know that he's a jinx and <laughs> the the least weren't the first team that he's done this to <laughs> that's true that's you know, true it, there's a uh, history of this th- documented there is a online history, and i have it online here and i'm going to pull it up where he talks about you know the, the article says this isn't the first time that that the Drake curse has happened. He, he was shown on an Instagram post wearing an Alabama sweater uh, <laughs> before before the Alabama national championship game. And what happened? Alabama got creamed forty four to sixteen against Clemson. Mm-hmm. And and that and it's not just football that it happens there. Tennis. It was I believe it was the U.S. Open. I'm sorry, it was uh. Yeah, I think it was the U.S. Open, one of the Grand Slam, the big t- tournaments, and 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 Serena Williams was dominating all the way through the tournament. She gets to the final match against a, a, an Italian player, and Drake is there supporting her, and she ends up losing in the finals. And it's not just that; it's and also Kentucky. He's a big Kentucky Wildcat supporter for the for the um, NCAA uh, men's basketball. Always mm-hmm. repping his uh, Kentucky Wildcats uh, jersey, and Kentucky hasn't won a national title since 2004. Before Drake has been relevant, so you do the math there. <laughs> and also, uh, was it? I believe it was one thing that he has done. Uh, oh, yeah. So, oh, you're gonna like this because you're a big soccer fan. 
AS Roma, the soccer club <laughs> in, in Italy, has banned their players from taking any photos with Drake. Smart. <laughs> it's 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 gone that serious where you have to tell grown adults, yeah, he's famous, he's a rapper. Don't take any photos with him. Because this Drake is this Drake curse is real. It is, so, and he's a huge NBA fan, and th- he's the biggest oh. bandwagon supporter ever. Well, he, he, him with the Raptors, he's the global amb- ambassadors for ambassador for the Raptors. So, so he's there at every game, courtside, sitting next to the bench. Obviously, well, the Raptors ha- haven't won anything in, since he be- since he took over that role. So I don't know if that's a good thing for them. <laughs> Anyways, but Drake, stay away when the Leafs are playing. You know, go perform a concert with Rihanna somewhere. Yeah, and, do uh, something. Go do, do something. Yeah. So obviously the Leafs are now it's in the best best of three against Boston. The, the biggest surprise of the first round of the playoffs is that both Tampa Bay Lightning, a team that has won 62 games during the regular season, got swept by the Columbus Blue Jackets. And the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, you know, one of the big threats in the Eastern Conference, also got swept by the New York Islanders. So those two major big teams are out. And that's fantastic. That's fantastic because now we can uh, start talking in Detroit about a new uh, GM. Oh, geez, yes. I'm well, just hey, saying. I was going to say the, 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 blue pl- the blueprint has been laid out. So mm-hmm. if it's going to happen... Let it happen now. I guess why not? It's our, it's our luck. Good. There, there you go. Well, hopefully it all works out for those wings. Uh, <laughs> so from NHL hockey playoffs to let's talk about the NFL schedule that was released. Yeah, last it's right in front of my face. I'm looking so, at it right now. So Jake will list off his teams, uh, the teams that the Lions play, and we'll go back and forth. We'll say win or loss. And we'll see how many uh, wins or losses they'll have. Yeah, and, and a lot of people hate this part because, oh, we're guessing on teams. Yeah. But you know what? It's fun for me, damn it, because um, <laughs> it might actually be very close to their actual record since this team's right. shit. Yeah. So, yeah, we, uh, week one, they have, they're at the Cardinals. Uh, so, on the road. It's probably going to yeah. be against Kyler Murray. <laughs> yeah, probably. I'm, I'm, take, I'm taking the Lions in this one. Me too. I'll, I'll, I'll take the Lions. Yeah, I think the Cardinals will be ready with a new quarterback, or um, just they're just still not great. Yeah, they're not. Not even at home. Just not good. So that's a W there. But it okay. doesn't get any better. The schedule is kind of tough because one, it's the Lions. Two, all the other teams are good. So week <laughs> two, the Lions. Uh, versus Chargers at home. Mm, Tough char- call. You know what? I like I like the, that they're at home. They're going to be pumped up. Obviously, hometown crowd is going to get behind them. And the Chargers are, you know, they had a, a great season last year. I don't know if they're going to carry it over to the next year. I know Phillip Rivers is another year older, but he can still chuck that ball like there's no, like there's nothing else. And Melvin Gordon, obviously a big threat, and that defense has really come alive. I, my heart says Lions, but realistically, I think that's where they're going to suffer their first loss of the season. Well, uh, Chargers are not a playoff team. Chargers are a regular season team. They're amazing during the regular season. But they're they, terrible in the playoffs. But they, but they made the playoffs last year. I know, but what happened? Yeah, okay, they, they ran into the Patriots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So okay. they get bounced in the playoffs all the time, but during the regular season, they are amazing. It's going to be uh, – the Lions are going to lose by at least three touchdowns. So I'm taking the Chargers in this one. Okay. Yeah. So week three, Lions at Philly. Oof. Yeah. It, you know, Philly's always a tough place to play. I'm going to say yeah, it's right outside. Now, it's outside. But on the good news, it's still going to be in, this, in September, so it's going to be nice, I would say. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to still be warm-ish weather. But I just think Lions, their history against, you know, tough places on the road, I think they, they lose this one. They drop this one as well. That's right. I, I agree. Uh, it's going to be a close one, I think, but uh, the Lions are going to lose. Yeah. Week four, 
uh, Lions at home versus the Chiefs. I'm not even going to get the details on this one. Chiefs <laughs> by 40. This is an insane team. Lions might as well just bench but, Stafford for this one. But you know what? You know, the, the Chiefs, they, they, they lost a couple of people during the offseason, right? So, yeah. you know what? It's something about the Lions and these big games where they have no place to to win, but they always play great against these great teams. Oh, for sure. I, it's probably going to be – they're going to win know, by a field goal, but you know, realistically. No, yeah, but, you know, I think it's going to be close. But, hey, I'm optimistic this early in the season. I say the Lions are going to take this one. Wow. Yeah. This, this is heard, a Super Bowl you, contender You team. heard it here first, folks. Oh, all right. That's – well, you know, I'm shocked over here. Shot. I, right now, I have them at one and three so far going into the box. Right bottom. now, I, I'm two and two. I okay. get the Lions at two and two. All right. Lions at Green Bay. The pack. The pack is still garbage. I'm taking the Lions at Lambeau. Oof. You know, I don't like care about like, Aaron Rodgers anymore. No, a, still... It's Aaron Rodgers, and they really – it depends on really what they do in the draft and see right. what kind of uh, – weapons they have for Aaron Rodgers but that defense is still going to be scary I know they have a new coach and a new system put in place it's gonna be interesting as see how well uh, the new coach and new system you know how well the players take to that take mm-hmm. to that system so I'm gonna say just because it's Green Bay I say the Lions lose this one wow I'm thinking the O-line for Packers is kind of poop and the yep. Lions' defense is so much better than last year. Yeah, and it's and, so, and it's going to get better, I think. Yeah, exactly. It is. Yeah, yeah. And we'll talk about that next week. Right. But um, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, I'm thinking they'll just run over the Packers with the defense doing most of the work because, yeah, it's just yeah. the offense non-existent still. Right. All right, week seven, Lions at home versus the Vikings. What do you think there? Ugh. I, I think the Vikings are the biggest unknown commodity in the I league. Agree. They're they're very Jekyll and Hyde on what's on, on what kind of team, what kind of Vikings team shows up. Obviously, they they demolished the Lions last year and having that ten sack game against Matthew Stafford. Uh, okay. So obviously, Stafford and the Vikings do not mix well. So I'm no. going to take the Vikings in this one. I agree. Uh, Vikings are too quick for the Lions. They still have excellent players. Uh, quarterback's questionable, but they're still a better team. On paper, on the field, Yeah, Vikings take it. Lions at Giant, uh, versus Giants at home. We can't. Oh, g- give me the Lions. Oh, yeah. the Giants are so <laughs> poop. It, it, and if you ever listen to Mike Valeni, he, yeah. he, he would agree with me. They're yes. just so bad. Uh, they are uh, bad. They, they, they need a quarterback, and who knows if they're even going to draft a quarterback. That's still up in the air. So yeah. if, if it's Eli Manning at the helm, yeah, I, I like is. the Lions in this one. Well, it's the return of Golden Tate. Oh, the, the great Golden <laughs> Tate. Yes, get, get, get that video tribute ready for him. That's right. Raise some banners. Okay. That's right. <laughs> Week 9, Lions at Raiders. So going out to uh, out there, yeah. This yeah. is this is this is an intriguing game because the Raiders have completely revamped, and you know Antonio Brown added. You know they have this whole new look about them. The uh, 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 Sal native Luke Wilson's on the Raiders team, so I don't know. <laughs> but like you know what, I think it's John Gruden, but. I think it's not the same John Gruden. I like the Lions in this one to get it done on the road in Oakland. I, I agree. I think uh, the Raiders are going to be a shit show this mm-hmm. year. Uh, I think it's going to be so much drama on that field in the locker room that they're going to be dysfunctional. Lions mm-hmm. go in, hopefully take care of business. And nice. a side, a side note on this one, there are rumors out there. Detroit's trying to trade with uh, the Raiders for some draft picks, maybe Stafford. There was rumors about that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I, I, the Detroit I, being I, accessible I for football. Too. I I I believe it was Sports Illustrated or ESPN had a a, a fantasy um, trade scenario where Oakland and Detroit, Detroit would trade Stafford and their third round pick 
for the the the, the Raiders' fourth overall pick. So the and their second round pick. So the, no, the that's awful trade. Get, so the Lions would get the fourth overall pick and the eighth overall yeah. pick. You yeah, still would you, you wouldn't do that, Jake? No, I would not do that. No. Where, no, you, I, where, I, I, where you could get a quarterback like Dwayne Haskins and a stud defender, you know? Right, but so, you're losing uh, too many picks and no. you're losing your your quarterback. But I'm, well, I'm going to have to look at those, uh, what they were offering exactly in that scenario. Yeah. But from what I heard, it was not enough and Detroit was giving up too much. Wow. We'll see. Hopefully, there, hopefully there'll be some draft excitement coming uh next week on tuesday yes tuesday <laughs> well, we'll be previewing that thing yes so all right lions at bears <sighs> the yeah, bears i know that's the, how i feel about that one the, the the bears are like the new beast of the of the nfc nfc uh, north now especially with right. with coach matt matt Nagy at the helm and their playoff run Last year, that ended abruptly thanks to uh, Cody Parkey double uh, shanking it off the off yep. the field goal post. Uh, I think that's a lot. That that's a, a that's a big out for the Lions. I hate the Bears with a passion, but I think they're the better team. Exactly. That and, Khalil, that Khalil yeah. Mack is just too strong. Oh no, that guy is amazing. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Okay, Lions, Cowboys, home game. I'm, I hate the Cowboys almost as much as I hate the Bears, and, uh, but I'm taking the Lions in this one. I, I I think I think you're gonna, you know, I think we're both gonna agree on that. I think the Lions, uh, after last year when Zeke just ran a mud hole through that defense, yep. I think they're gonna find a way to contain him this time and make Dak Prescott beat them. I think so, and then if you're relying on Dak Dak Prescott to throw the ball and beat you, you have a good chance of winning the game. Exactly. So I'm going to give the Leos that one. Okay, Lions at Redskins, week 12. Lions all day. <laughs> Redskins are trash. Give me the yes. Leos. Exactly. I'm not even going to talk about them. They're yeah. shit. Okay, Lions, <laughs> Bears, home game. I think it's going to be a um, I bl- I believe that's, much closer game now. Is that uh, Thanksgiving? Uh, sure. I think so, yeah, week 13. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. I believe so. Obviously, they played them last year, and it was a competitive game till the end, where Stafford became Stafford. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I, I I think I think they split with the Bears this year. I agree. Up. So I, agree. I, I give them a, a win there. Okay, good. Uh, Lions at Vikings again. We talked about the Vikings. I think Vikings take it again. Lions at Vikings always. Yeah. Always tough place to play. Exactly. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll give the Vikings uh, the, the season sweep there. Yeah, me too. Uh, week fifteen, Lions, uh, Buccaneers at home. Uh, Buccaneers are a dumpster fire. <laughs> you know, quarterback situation sucks. Yeah. I'm thinking Lions. Lions at home, winning that one. Lions at home. Yeah, I like that. That's one of those games that they should win, and those are the always scariest kinds of games where they should win and and they they usually end up falling into a trap but hopefully they'll prove me wrong Mm -hmm. we're talking about on paper here this is all imaginary yeah okay week 16 lions at broncos (sighs) zero faith in the broncos but they are at home but lions have gone in there and destroyed broncos before so i'm taking the lions in this one i'm being faithful. yeah you know what it's mile high in that hostile environment and probably going against Joe Flacco at that time, yep. if, he, if he's not injured or benched. Uh, week um, 16, probably injured yeah. or benched. <laughs> yeah, <that>. exactly. <laughs> so, you know what? I, I, I just think I think, I think think the Lions are going to have a lot more to play for at that point of the season. Give me the Lions. Nice. Now, Lions, Packers, home game, end of season, last game. And if we have never learned from this scenario – I love the Lions to win. They're not gonna. They're going to lose this game, unfortunately, because it's the Lions and it's the last game of the season, and it'll probably matter. So I'm <laughs> making them lose at home. That's Green Bay. Yeah. Even though they're the better team. 
yeah, I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna say, be in the same boat that the Lions uh, end up losing against Green Bay. That, so they're gonna split against Green Bay and Chicago this year. So I have them at nine and seven this year. Wow, so do I. So there you go. We yep. we have we have uh, agreed to agree that they that they'll finish nine and seven. And not make the playoffs and, and suck. Not make the playoffs, but who knows? Depends. <laughs> who knows? Maybe that division nine and seven might get you a wild card. Spot. Wild card, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Maybe, maybe depends, depends on, on everything. Everybody happens. else depends exactly. on how Seattle does with their new quarter with their quarterback getting paid yesterday. Yeah, a lot Russell of money. Wilson, a lot of money. Million. Thir- Thirty-five million dollars a year. That's right. Making him the highest played quarterback. Uh, on a year-to-year salary, that's crazy. Mm, it is so crazy. It, it's it only means good thing for whoever's next uh, the the, ne- the next quarterback to get uh, signed. That's right. They're, you're looking at thirty-eight or possibly forty million dollars a year. That's crazy money. Yeah. So that is our pre-draft schedule predictions for Lions. We'll have one before the season starts. Oh, we'll God, see. yes. Yeah, we'll see because then, you know, there'll be teams will actually play a couple of preseason games so we actually can evaluate what they look like on the field. We'll have and the plus, draft. And, and the draft will yeah, already do. be done. And also, who knows, there might be injuries during the preseason that would that's going to shake uh, a lot of teams. Uh, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, another collarbone break. Uh, maybe. Or, or it could be a big blow to injury if Khalil Mack gets injured. Then that shakes up everything. Oh, then that's, yeah, that's, that'll be crazy. But that guy's a beast. So we'll exactly. So going so, from, from yeah, sports, go um, there was a, a blockbuster weekend on uh, this Sunday. But what I mean by that, it was uh, one of the biggest anticipated shows came out with their first episode of their last season. So yes. if anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, Game of Thrones season, what is this, eight? This will be season eight, the final season. Yeah, final season. Uh, started up on Sunday with episode one. Speaking of great television shows, the return of Game of Thrones is finally here. Episode one of the final season has just aired last Sunday. So if you haven't seen it, probably not a real fan. And you're either going to wait till the entire series is over. Then you're going to binge the entire series. Or you have seen it, and we have an expert on our show to, to discuss about to discuss what happened on the first episode and what we can look forward to in the episodes to come. Lady Alicia has joined us on the ADG podcast. Mm-hmm. Welcome, Lady Alicia. Hi, Darren. How are you? Hi, Alicia. <laughs> Hi, Jacob. So, Alicia, I want to get your first impressions of the episode. But before we do that, tell us, tell the viewers, all our listeners, what makes you a Game of Thrones expert? Um, I, I don't <laughs> know if I, I mean, I don't know if I'm an expert. So yeah. I, I watched, I binged the first season, I think right before the second season started. Mm-hmm. And then I read all of the books. Mm-hmm. So I read like all at the time, uh, Dra- Dance of Dragons had just come out. So I read all four of the books. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've watched, of course, I've watched every season as it airs. Mm-hmm. And um, I have like I have read some of a history of Westeros, which is the book uh, that George R. R. Martin released a couple of years ago. I've read some of Fire and Blood which is the Targaryen book that came out earlier this year. I've read about half of it. Mm. So I have read all of the material. And I, I, I mean, I'm really more of a fan of the show. I, I love the show. I'm a huge fan. And I was so excited in the last week leading up to the premiere, just waiting <laughs> two years. It's been two years. Two long years. That's so crazy. It's been that long between seasons. It is. Two long years since the last season was on. Yeah. So I it, was sorry. No, I, I was gonna say it's crazy that a show can be off the air for two years and they still capture the mind and the fandom of millions of people around the world. It's, yeah, it's quite I, unbelievable. I think it's because, um, well, I think it's the size of the fandom, but it's also just the quality of the show. It's yes. it's movie. It's really it's so it's movie quality. So mm. it's 
it's not like waiting for a show for two years. It's like waiting two years between movies. I think that's <laughs> a lot of it is, is waiting two years between movies as well. Exactly. And this season, like we, we knew, I mean, if you followed kind of the rumors and, and the production, we knew it was going to be huge because they filmed for close to a year. Uh, there was, we know that there's a big battle coming that took them 65 nights to mm-hmm. film. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's the, it's, it's supposed to be the longest battle in cinematic <laughs> history, TV or film. <laughs> Apparently it edges out Helm's Deep in Lord of the Rings, which I may have slept through. <laughs> oh, boo. Come on. That was fun. Did you sleep through the Lord of the Rings or the actual battle? Because it's, it, it, the movies like, are half sleepy because they're walking through like 80% of them. Yeah, I think I, I, think I woke up during, during the battle, okay, I think. That's, that's excusable, though. That's okay. Um, but, okay, so yeah. So it edges out Helm's Deep by mm-hmm. a few minutes. So it's, it's and um, the rumors say that that's episode three. Everything is leading us to believe Ooh. that that will be episode. Spoiler three. alert! No, there you go. Ironically, same weekend <laughs> that Endgame comes out. I know. Isn't that weird? That, that's such a coincidence. Oh, shocker! <laughs> so, uh, so, so, so I, I know what I'm going to be doing that weekend. All right. Yep. That, 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 Stay that, at home. I'm ready. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so th- there was talks like, obviously, this season is is the most expensive season that they have made of game of thrones i believe i saw a report that each episode cost over 15 million dollars to make yeah and it and i mean even just from the first episode it shows oh yes it definitely shows uh the quality of this episode was just so i mean it was more than i expected i was i was a little bit nervous that people were so excited that if the that if the first episode didn't you know, live up to their expectations that that they would be disappointed. But I think that it really, it it was perfect for the first episode. Like it, it you know, there were the reunions. There was it laid the groundwork for the rest of the season. It really it did a lot. It was a bit of a you know, there was no big action. There was no huge deaths. It was a slower paced episode, but I think it was perfect for setting up what is coming. You you said that uh, slower pace, but like, you know, the, the, the first couple of Westeros riding on dragons, that, that was pretty epic. That's something that I was I wasn't expecting to happen. Oh, you were. Yeah. <laughs> John riding a dragon. Yeah. I figured that that was going to happen. <laughs> I thought that that would happen. Uh, the one, the actually, the one part of the this the show, the episode that surprised me was John finding out who he is. Yes. The fact that he found out in the first episode, I wasn't quite sure if that was going to happen. I thought that maybe they would leave that to the second episode. I wasn't quite right. sure, but right. I am. I am very glad. There's two things about it that I'm glad about. I'm glad that it was Sam that told mm-hmm. him because right. I think Bran would have done a horrible job. <laughs> Brand's got a lot on his mind. Yeah, I love that literally. kid. He's straight to the point. He's great. Literally, the kid yeah. literally has a he, lot on his he mind. He pretty much says, "We don't need a time. We don't have time to bicker between yeah. who's prettier or, or whatever." You know, uh, knock that nice shit out. There's yeah, a fight we, coming. We, we have shit coming. We got, we got shit to take stuff, care of. We got stuff exactly. to do. Exactly. Um, uh, but. Then he spent the rest of the episode just staring at everybody. Like every scene he was in, he's just staring. I'm like, hey. he's just staring. Like, yeah, you're everybody I, I, out. I, I, Stop think, it. I think I, I think I saw something online. Uh, it was a GoFundMe to get uh, a brand a ramp so he can go into the castle. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor kid's looking like that because he's always outside. He's probably he's always broken. outside because there's steps and you can you can't go up them. Now there's nobody to carry him around <laughs> anymore. No one to carry him around anymore. Exactly. Oh, so, <laughs> so all this happening and uh, one of the big things that I took away from the first episode it was actually Sam. Uh, finding out that Daenerys end up executing his father and his brother. And the look on his face was just, I don't know. It, yeah, he looked very upset and very, you know, torn. But 
I, I think he was more upset that his brother got executed as well. I think so too. Yeah, actually, his reaction his really, really surprised. Yeah, his reaction really surprised me. I, um, I thought that he, he would be upset. I, I, I didn't think he was going to be that emotional about it. It did really, really surprise me to see him so upset and then for him to go down and say, would you have done that? Would you have done the same thing? It, it, would you have killed them? And, you know, and John saying, you know, you, I've killed men that have disobeyed me. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, what I think surprised me the most is that at this point, Sam saying, she's not our queen, you are. And actually, like, supports John right. in that claim, uh, which I, I don't think John is going to claim the Iron Throne. John doesn't mm-hmm. want to or commander, he didn't want to be king in the north. He doesn't want to be king of. Uh, he's not going to challenge Danny. No, D- but do you like, think? Uh, like if, I don't think that's. I, I was going to say, do you think? I was going to say, do you think there's going to be like a, like a co-owner uh, of the throne, like uh, like, um, uh, I, I believe, um, Varys was talking about. Maybe they no, run. No. The, 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 nope. the Westeros together? Nope. No. One of them is going to die. <laughs> oh, I, I believe that this season is either, either, either one person lives or they all die. You know, it's either way, everyone's going to be disappointed in the season because their favorite character is going to get killed. I don't, I don't think my favorite character is going to get killed. You don't think so? <laughs> well, my favorite character well, no, died I... the first season, so I'm I'm good. Uh, see, so there you go. <laughs> so, so so let's let's just for fun, we'll we'll put our, we'll put our stakes in the ground now after seeing the first episode on who thinks will end up on the Iron Throne or if anyone will end up on the Iron Throne. So Jake, I'm going to start with you. Out of the remaining characters, who who do you think is going to end up on the Iron Throne? Uh, I know it's not going to happen, but I'm going to go with Jon Snow anyway. Okay. Uh, uh, Alicia? Uh, there won't be an Iron Throne to take. Oh, okay. All right. You know, I, I'm I'm going to go with a wild card, and I think Tyrion's going to end up there for some reason. Nice. Really? Yeah. Really? I just think he's, he's, cra- he's crafty enough just to weasel his way in there. Yeah, but he's not going to live. Well, he's not going to live. He's never know. He is. No. So, yeah, Tyrion is the one character that I have (laughs) always known was going to die. Like the second, even in the books, the second he left King's Landing and said, I'm going to go and pledge my loyalty to Daenerys. I was like, that's it. He's done. (laughs) He's not surviving this series. Tyrion's the one character that I'm 100% sure is going to (laughs) die. Arya is the one character that I'm 100% sure is going to live. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's that kid's got a dark side to her. That's probably the well, best she, bet. Well, she has to, especially when she uh, reunited with the Hound at the, in the first episode. And it oh, was like, that was great. You'd be like, oh, you, <laughs> you're a cold-hearted great. bitch. That's why you're still alive. Yep. So, obviously. And that, yeah. that's like... <laughs> I swear that's the closest thing the hound could come to saying I love you. That, <laughs> that a girl. It's like, yeah. it's like girl. him telling Arya that he's proud of her. Yeah. He's yeah. proud that she's still alive. <laughs> I, like I you, think he really is. <laughs> like, you left me to die, and, and I robbed you. Yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> so that's great. So next, uh, this upcoming episode that's uh, happening uh, on Sunday, what are, what are your some of your thoughts you think what are we going to see leading up to this great big war of Winterfell that's coming? Uh, well, we know that Jamie is in Winterfell and that, uh, so the, the very brief trailer that we've seen is he is in front of Danny and Danny is saying that, you know, I, I grew up hearing stories about the man that killed my father, uh, but I don't think she's going to kill him. I would be very disappointed if Jamie died this early because I don't think his story is done yet. Mm-hmm. And and, um, uh, and then, you know, then there was some stuff in the series about, about in the preview about them preparing 
So I do think it's going to be a lot of, yeah, like them getting them getting ready for this big battle. Uh, but I know that like there's probably going to be other stuff. So we're also going to have to see how a lot of the stuff with Cersei plays out as well. Right. That's my next question. Do you think uh, the Lannisters will actually? We know they sent an army, but are they? Is the army coming to help, or going to wait and look at the scraps that are left over and eliminate everybody that's left over? I because... think that yeah, I think that Cersei is is um, counting on either this the army of the dead just slaughtering everybody, and then she doesn't have to worry about it. Or she's hoping that they'll defeat them and then she'll take them on, which is stupid if she thinks that she stands a chance against really either army. Like, I really, I look at Cersei and the decisions that she's making uh, at the end of last season, the beginning of this season, and I don't, she's, I feel like she's desperate. She doesn't understand what she's doing. I mean, she she gave Braun, of all people, she gave Braun the crossbow, and said, "I need, you know, I will. We're gonna pay you this much to take out my brothers." And I'm like, "He's not. I know Braun is a mercenary, and he'll kill for anything. But I don't think he's going to kill either Tyrion or Jaime." And that was the moment where I was like, "Oh, Cersei might. She might actually die, and Jaime might be the one to kill her because that's a big rumor." That's been mm-hmm. going on. All right. Mm, there uh, you go. The, the, there you go. And speaking of Cersei, it was kind of disheartening. You know, like they have, she has everything she could possibly want. She has a mountain for a protector, but she has no elephants. She really wanted those elephants. <laughs> well, nice. you don't get elephants when you spend the whole budget on the dragons. So. <laughs> Very true. That's right. So, uh, uh, yeah, obviously there was, a, I think that was pretty fun that, uh, that I, I was on Twitter afterwards and a lot of people were were feeling sorry for her that she didn't get her elephants. So, who That's knows? Ma- ma- maybe they'll make an elephant uh, uh, for her coming up. <laughs> uh, so, obviously, this, uh, this series is going to be spectacular. The ending is going to be out of this world. Alicia will be back here every episode we'll try to we'll try to connect with her after every episode just get her thoughts and predictions for the upcoming episode uh but that's it for our little conversation with alicia stay tuned we'll have more of the adg podcast coming up all right darren you have a top five for us today oh that i do going crazy top five no debating top five top five top five can't wait A, a, a little background on this week's top five I was browsing YouTube like I do sporadically from time to time, and I found there was a performance, a musical performance, uh, by it was on the uh, Late Night with Jimmy Kimmel show, and he and he had Weezer on performing um, "Everybody Wants to Rule the World," the the Tears for Fears cover, with the actual members of Tears for Fears playing with them. Ah. So that was pretty neat seeing the original and the cover version on stage doing the exact same song. Now, so quick, that question, was, quick question yes. to you about that. Yes. yes. Weezer also covered. Well, that was they, they do the last couple of songs were covers, weren't they? Didn't they do uh, Africa? Yes. Uh, by Toto. Yes. By Toto. And, right. And in my opinion, that was the worst damn cover of a very <laughs> terrible song. And if I hear that shit on the radio again, I'm going to be so I angry. Know. I know, Awful. but like, but you know what? Continue. They, Sorry. They have the, the the Weezer put out the Teal album, which is is an entire album of covers, and yeah. they've done everything from Toto's Africa to Billy Jean to uh, Tears for Fears. So if you love covers, you love Weezer. That's the album to get. It's on Spotify. It's on iTunes. Go check it out. So that kind of it, it, you know encouraged me to look up my personal opinion of the top five best cover versions of songs. Love it. Yeah. It. So number five, I picked a great one from, it was originally covered by Fleetwood Mac, but the Dixie chicks covered their song landslide. Oh. One of the, yeah. One of the great songs out there. Um, 
if I'm sure you've I'm sure you heard of it. If you if you haven't heard of the original version, you've definitely heard of the Dixie Chicks version of it. It's it definitely made their careers. It really boosted them into superstardom with that song. But Fleetwood Mac, the original authors of the song Landslide, definitely that ch- that comes in at number five. Great song, great song. Yeah, number yeah. four. I I went a little bit off the board, but still a great song. Originally done by Nine Inch Nails was the song hurt and it was oh, covered man. by the late great johnny cash love that yeah so that's one of my favorites of all time right there it is fantastic both yeah. versions are, are just amazing absolutely it, and if you know this is what johnny cash was like very old this is towards the end of his career so his voice wasn't as strong as it used to be but i think it really brought more to the song because the withering and yes. the trembling in his voice really That's made right. the song really stand out. That was so great. Johnny Cash Hurt, uh, the cover of Nine Inch Nails song, is at number four. Uh, number three, there's has this has been covered quite a bit from Jeff uh, uh, Jeff Buckley, I believe, to Katie Lang, and I think the Katie Lang version has is far more superior. It's Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. This mm-hmm. is the song has been covered so many times, but Katie Lang, a Canadian icon, really has done it justice. And if you ask anyone who is the best, what is the best version of this song, nine out of ten times they're going to say the Katie Lang version, without a doubt. That, I'm probably the other one one percent. Sure, sure, it's but, not going to please everyone. But beautiful song. Though. Yeah, it's great. It, it it covers everything that you want to see, and also seeing. Um, a Canadian artist being covering another great Canadian artist. That's always great to see, uh, to see the, the Canadian content, you know, alive and well. Uh, number two is Pearl Jam's Last Kiss, which yes. was, ori- which, which the original artist, Wayne uh, Cochran, uh, did, the, did the song Last Kiss. And if you're a Pearl Jam fan, you know what I'm talking about. This was one of the best covers that they've ever done of this song. That's right. Very, I'm a very good. Big song. Pearl Jam fan, and and I think that this song, which I've never heard of before, but it made me. What? Go, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't hear it. I I knew it was a cover, so I went back and I listened to the original version of the song and to see like how different it was. You know, back then it was like kind of poppy and kind of like quick pace. And well, then, it was like uh, uh, early. I'm sorry, late fifties, early sixties for the original. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's the that, one I heard first. Yeah, so t- to see what how Pearl Jam like brought, made it very Pearl Jammy, you know, yeah. their version of it really like slowed it down, and Eddie Vedder's amazing vocals really brought that song to life. That's right. That's nice. at number two. Number one, I gotta say because I heard the song, I believe it was in high school when I first heard the song, the the cover version of the song made me go back to hear who originally sung the song and I fell in love with him and, and the artists uh, that he worked with before is Don Henley's the boys of summer. Boys that of song, summer. Yeah. That song being, being covered by the, the Ataris, uh, yeah. which was great because it was like a lot of punk, uh, punk, uh, not heavy metal, but just punk pop style of that song. And I thought it really had a great spin on it. So I love Don Henley, love him in the Eagles, love his solo stuff. So to see this, you know, be reintroduced to a younger bass, that was great to see. So the Ataris, the Boys of Summer, that's the number one cover song, in my opinion. Awesome. That's all my playlist, too. Oh, uh, one time has been. Great. Good, Good job. Yeah. Nice top five, man. So a quick question for you, Darren, about your top five. Sure. Will we ever see a cover of Eddie Murphy's Party All the Time? <laughs> <laughs> we should we should i'm I'm sure some artist is just looking for the right version of that song but i don't yeah. think you like you, you don't see people repainting the mona lisa so yeah, you know what when you tell the truth you tell the truth so, <laughs> his, we... his his girl likes to party all the time party all the time party exactly. all the time yeah. so now that we're talking about music let's do our music feature for the week and this week i have an artist from uh, Vancouver. Uh, his name is DG Adams, 
And he has an al- album that uh, just came out called Nest of Vipers. Uh, it's an um, interesting artist. This is more of an um, alternative folk uh, rock album, uh, very down to earth. Mm-hmm. And the song we'll be playing for you guys today is actually the title track, Nest of Vipers. And I did a little sound check on all these songs, and I do have a favorite song of this album, which is great. And if you, uh, well, I will post some links to this on our uh, Facebook and all the other social media. There's a song on there. We're going to play Nest of Vipers in just a second, but there's a song on there called If I, if I Ever Have a Woman. It sounds like a more rootsy version of a Johnny Cash song. Okay. It's, it's a really interesting uh, sound that he's got going for himself. It's, he's an independent artist. No record label here, so we, we support independent artists. And this one, again, is DG Adams out of uh, Vancouver. Uh, And we'll share some of these links. But here is title track from the album Nest of Vipers. Nest of Vipers by DG Adams. I live in a nest of vipers but at least they sleep And they don't always bite Sometimes they're sweet And just to be honest My head has a nest But it only comes out When the drink beats my blood Drink beats my blood Drink beats my blood Three snakes, they pursue me For their own agendas But they can be charming And they can be cool Have they drawn the last straw? 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 All that remains is my little darling Love of my life, light of my morning Three calls a day I have insisted And I will insist That this nest of vipers Give her a rest Away from the nest Away from the nest Away from the nest I live in a nest of vipers But at least they sleep And they don't always bite Sometimes they're sweet And just to be honest My head has a nest But it only comes out When the drink beats my blood Drink beats my blood Have they drawn the last straw? Have they drawn the last straw? Have they drawn the last straw? They have drawn the last straw All right, that was Nest of Vipers by D.G. Adams So check out those links We'll share our YouTube channel and SoundCloud and all the other cool stuff on our uh, Facebook page. Hope you guys enjoyed that track. So, Darren, 
uh, there was another major event this weekend. Tiger Woods what, winning the Masters? Yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately for Mr. Uh, Tiger, he is the garbage person of the week. This week. Oh! <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Wow! I know, I know. I, I was, I was building that the one up. Poor guy, man. He, he, he fought all the way back. Multiple back surgeries. Uh, yeah, wins the Masters. All those missed shots by everybody else in the final round. Hey, well, that's not his fault. <laughs> right, but I'm gonna explain myself. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna explain myself. One, there's a reason why he's the garbage person of the week. But let's be honest here. Tiger Woods. One of, if not the best golfers of all time. Okay? Right. No questioning his skills. Mm-hmm. He is an amazing golfer. Amazing athlete. But, there's a, there's a two-part garbage person of the week here. This is the first. Tiger Woods is a terrible human being. On, a, by, on many accounts. Not just because of his private life and everything that happened smashing of the windows, the hookers, whatever. It's more of the, I have fans, but I will not acknowledge them. I will do everything for me, myself, and I, (laughs) and there's nobody around me that I care about fan-wise. Okay? Mm. This guy is very much known for not being a team player. Two, not acknowledging his fans, not signing autographs, not being very approachable. You'll see people out there trying to high-five this guy, say congrats, nothing. He, this guy will walk through a room, allegedly, mm-hmm. and not even acknowledge people saying hi, congrats, good job, hey, Tiger. No. He is zeroed in. From one from point A to point B. Nothing else exists except Tiger. Tiger loves Tiger. Tiger's about Tiger. Right. I think. What's your take on that one? Well, I look at it in certain ways. If he's on the golf course playing in the Masters and walking between holes from from one from one uh, putting surface to the next tee box, you're so focused and that that's understandable you don't acknowledge fans or all that because you're you're working you're working towards a championship true and and you don't need to be distracted obviously yeah he comes with a lot of lore he comes with um this huge ego but that's kind of, that's comes to be expected when you are the face of your sport like lebron james is to basketball a lot of people don't like lebron james because like you said he, He's, you know, egotistical and he thinks he's the greatest and all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. But the, but it, there's someone like that in every sport. So, sure, yeah. But LeBron James is very, uh, goes a lot of back and forth with the fans. He's sure. approachable. Sure. Because, well, l- l- let's Kobe, face it. Kobe, same thing. Yeah. Well, uh, obviously, Kobe a lot more now that he's retired. He can, you know, embrace all playing. those people. Yeah. But, but, but it really comes down to, those, like I was going to say, because basketball, the fans are like, boom, right there. And, and a lot of times with golf, you know, obviously there's a lot of security and they're pushed back. But like what, if they hit their ball off to the side of the green or off the side of the fairway, they're right in there with the fans. So, yep. yeah. So it takes a lot to mentally be focused and not let yourself get distracted by some crazy fans that yell as soon as he hits the ball or if i don't know if you saw there was a security guard that almost took him out after uh, after he hit a a shot out of the out of the crowd a security guard slid in slipped on the grass and and hit the back of his foot he was hobbling a little bit but but if something were to happen to tiger i'm sure that security guard would have to probably change his name true but let's be realistic if it wasn't for the fans Mm-hmm. You know how much t- of Tiger would be Tiger? Obviously, I mean, but yeah, but obviously, yeah. when Tiger wasn't Tiger during this, uh, how long he he he's been non-existent uh, since his uh, whole scandal and all these back surgeries when he wasn't 
himself, mm-hmm. other people took up the mantle. You know, the Jordan Spieth, the D- Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka. All right, but let's be honest. When, when Tiger comes to play, fans come to watch. Oh, without a doubt. It, right. Th- trust me, golf needed Tiger Woods to win again. As much I as agree. Tiger, as much as Tiger Woods needed to win again. That's golf right. needed them. And here's again. part two. Even though if Tiger Woods is a sh- shit person for not acknowledging his fans and not being very outgoing towards them, even after, you know, right. between golfing sessions and outside of the game. Mm-hmm. Here's my part two. The fan. If you are a fan that's fawning all over this dude, you know, watching and just overreacting like, oh, my God, Tiger hit the ball. (laughs) And up and down the course, like this guy is like the second coming. You're part of the problem, bro. You're part of the problem. This is a game. He is playing a game. Yeah, for a lot of money. Yeah, that's his career. But he's playing a game. And for you guys to sit out there and know this guy doesn't give you the time of day to even wave at you when it's all done to sign any autographs, and you're just, like, throwing yourself on the ground celebrating that he made a fucking putt. (laughs) Really? You're part of the problem. So that's my part two. Garbage person of of the week, you have Tiger Woods and his loyal, obsessed, annoying fans. Well, there you go. You get two for the price of one here on the ADG podcast. Thanks to Jake. That's the coolest fucking story I've ever heard in my entire life. That's insane. It, can I hear it again? Do you have time? Uh, so I, I think that that will do it for this week's episode. I think so. Jake. Yep. That was uh, good. Great episode. Special special thanks to uh, Lady Alicia for joining us on the ADG podcast. Thanks to our musical uh, guest for uh, sending us that great track. All right. And, uh, th- yeah, that's it. Check us out on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, YouTube. Twitter, YouTube. Yeah. All, it's all at ADG Podcast. Make sure you check that out. Like, subscribe, tell all your friends. Thank you very much for listening. And for the ADG Podcast, I'm Derek. And I'm Jacob. We are ADG.